This is a tutorial for Adobe Premiere Pro, video editing software that we have available on campus. Now the first thing you need to do when editing a video is create a project folder. You're going to want to have this locally if you're working on campus. It might be difficult to get your files onto the machine itself. It's going to force you to put them somewhere virtually, but it's quite likely that Premiere Pro won't be able to edit those. They won't be able to stream fast enough over the network to do any editing. So the best option is normally to have them on an external drive. The faster the drive, the better. If you can have a solid state drive with USB 3 or USB C, then you probably should be okay. Um, as long as you don't have very big video files. You should, however, be able to edit 4K, and I'll show you some tricks to, to edit that, even if your computer or your drive aren't very quick. So what you're going to do is put everything about this project in a single folder. So I've got on, on an external drive, I've got video project tutorial folder, and I've got all my videos in here. I'm also going to tell Adobe to, to put my video project in here when I create it. Uh, I can also have sound files and photos in that folder. So I'm going to start up Adobe Premiere Pro and I'm going to click New Project. There is an option at the bottom to select media to create new project. Uh, you can follow that if you like, but I'm going to do it a different way just to show you how to import things if you're halfway through a project and you have some new, new assets to put in there. So first of all, I'm going to give it a name. So it's um, Adobe Premiere Tutorial. I'm going to tell it where to put it, which is going to be on my external drive in the same folder as the video files. And I'm not going to use a template or anything. I'm just going to hit Create. Don't be alarmed if it looks slightly different when you open up Adobe Premiere on your computer. These all move around. So the important window, one of the important windows is the timeline. And just by grabbing it, um, I can drag it and put it wherever I want. Um, typically though, timeline is at the bottom. Um, this, however, is uh, the audio monitor. I might want to put that somewhere else. I'm going to put it by my program monitor. And the program monitor is where the video that I'm editing is actually going to appear. So how do we get started? It says import media to start. Now the easiest way to do that is to open a folder with your files in and drag them into that window there. It's called the project window. So I've imported the videos into my project window and I can have a look at them here. If I hover over them, it tells me a little bit about each one. And I can see that these top ones are, are 4K. Uh, you've got the pixel resolution there, so that's 3840 by 2160. And I've got another one in there, which is a different resolution. So that's old school HD. So that's 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. It's also a different um, frames per second. I, you can ignore that today, but the resolution is important. Okay, what we want to do uh, to get started is drag a file onto this timeline, and I want to make sure it's one of the files with the highest resolution. Otherwise, it's going to give me a timeline with a, a lower resolution. The resolution is, is is set by the first file you drag it. I'm going to drag in what I think is my most important video file. If I double click on it, it gives me a preview up here. It'll take a while to see it because it's such a big file. It's quite a long uh, interview. And we're going to, we can drag that into the timeline. Um, there's several ways you can drag it in there. You can um, drag the video only, the audio only, or by grabbing the picture, you can grab both at the same time. If there's a bit at the beginning where we're setting up that I want to clip out, I can put the mark in. And if there's a bit at the end where we're talking about something irrelevant, I can clip that out as well. And when I'm happy with that, I can grab it onto the, drag it onto the timeline. And there it is. Now in the timeline, that's where we can play things now. So if I hit play there, it will try to play it. 
and it's doing a reasonable job at the moment because I've got quite a powerful computer, um, but I know it will struggle eventually. Uh, we can move things around on this timeline. We can slide them to different places uh, and we can change the endpoint by sliding it backwards and forwards. You'll see though that there are different layers to the timeline as well. So uh, I'm just going to stop that. You can see it started to struggle there. It's getting a bit choppy. That's because it's a 4K file and my computer can't cope with it. Um, but just to, to finish explaining about the timeline, um, we have different layers here and it works a bit like QGIS. Uh, if I drag another video here and put it on top, you can only see what's, what's on top. That's what we're going to see when we export the video. But that doesn't apply for audio. If I put a clip which has some audio in, I play from here, it will play both sets of audio at once. Okay. If I find myself in a situation where I want to put uh, a video clip on top of another one and I want to keep the audio, and it's trying to put my audio over the top of my interview, I'm going to have to split up this, this clip. The way I do that is to right click, unlink, and then I can move them separately. And they should still snap together to line up perfectly. Okay, now before I can edit any of this video, I have to make sure it's going to play properly. Uh, if it's struggling, it's getting a bit choppy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a lower resolution version of this video while I'm editing. It's called a proxy. And then I'm going to put back the higher resolution one before I export. So what I need to do is go to the, the interview file on the project window and right click on it and there's a menu that comes up and one of those options is proxy and I'm going to hit create proxies. It's asking me if I want to change the format. I'm going to use QuickTime and ProRes low resolution and I'm going to keep it in the destination next to the original media and click OK. That's going to open Media Encoder eventually. And it's going to tick away in the background. That can take about five minutes to, to process. It's estimating four and a half, but it'll vary depending on the, the speed of your computer. When Media Encoder is finished, it will have created a folder inside your project folder called Proxies and in there you've got your lower resolution file. And what we want to do is attach that proxy and we do that by going to the, the original file again in your project window, right clicking, going to proxy again and attach proxies. Go to attach and it should find the proxy you just created automatically because of the file name and click OK and now it's got this little blue square that tells us that it's it's using a proxy on that video file. And it might think for a little bit, but then once it's it's processed it, that file should play very smoothly. If you zoom in, you'll find that it's lost a bit of resolution, uh, but that's okay, because if we want to, before we export, we can swap the files back and export the higher resolution one. But now I can edit as well, at will, and I can use the cut tool. So by default, in the toolbox here, you've got this triangle selected, the selection tool, and you can pick any one of those files and move them around. Uh, but there's a, a few other tools here, and the one you're most likely to want is the razor tool. And you can click anywhere in your interview. You can perhaps there was a piece here where we were talking about something that we don't want to include in the final video. You can cut either side, switch back to the 
selection tool. The shortcut is V to select that. Highlight the bit we don't want. Backspace to delete. Backspace to delete the, the space as well. And then we have a, a transition there where it will jump to the, the next relevant bit. Now that kind of edit these days is very acceptable. Uh, you see it a lot in YouTube, uh, but in the old days we used to cover those up with another piece of video over the top like that. There we are. So we've, we've hidden that edit point, and, and that is the most common way of editing that you still see uh, on, the, on the television, if you still have one of those. Right, so I can, I can cut the timeline, I can position things over the top, um, and once I'm happy with the edit, I can think about sorting my audio out. Now these uh, sound levels are quite low actually, but you wouldn't necessarily know, perhaps you've got your headphones turned up or whatever. But what we can do, we can expand the, the audio tracks at the bottom here, so we can see what's going on. There is a volume a bar here, the simplest thing to do is to, is to just pull that up. But we can be a little bit more sophisticated than that. We actually have a workspace, we go to Windows and Workspace for editing the audio. There it is. And it opens up this panel here and it's got some nice automated things. So if I highlight the, the dialogue and I can tell it that it is dialogue, and then I can use one of these presets. And the preset I'm going to use is called Balance Low Tone Voice. And both Hugo and I both have low tones to our voices. If you have a higher tone, you might want to select this other preset. Uh, but I'm going to click that one. And you'll see these graphs down here automatically jump. There we go. Took a little while. And that's correct. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It's now. Yeah. But what else? I mean, you, what about snap? I'm having to raise my voice to speak over it. I might decide that that's a little bit too loud for me and, and pull it down a little bit. What you're aiming for really is audio levels bouncing around around minus six on this scale. If you're ever hitting zero, that's topping out. So it's going to distort a bit and hurt people's ears. So if you're bouncing around about six, you're about right. Uh, minus six, sorry. Um, I've got some more audio in here, of course, and that is ambiance it's no dialogue in there so I can, I can click ambiance on that one and give it a preset perhaps I would like um, well I can experiment with these if I want to and it, it will change the levels here to more or less appropriate levels as to what I'm what I'm after and if I want to adjust them further again I've got that the the volume slider in there Okay, so we're happy with the audio. Perhaps we would like to add a simple graphic. The simplest way to do that is again with a workspace. You go to workspaces, captions and graphics. And there's the, the window. And there's a lot of templates in here. A lot of these templates look like news channel titles or, or sports titles. There's some uh, film credit styles, but I don't tend to use those. I go straight to edit. It's the simplest thing to do. You hit new, uh, you probably want text most commonly, and click go. And whatever the default is will appear there, and it will be in the color that you've got set from previously. Um, and it's going to create you a little piece of video essentially. Now I like to move mine to the top track so that it's over the top of everything and you can drag it around so it fills however much of the video you want. Uh, you can of course edit that text layer directly, type whatever you want in there. And if you want to change the colour of it you can by going down to this fill here. Okay and um, of course you have um, font sizes as well you can play with. And you can change the font too. There are also some, some more tools in here. So 
you can drag these numbers and change the gaps between the letters. You can change their height, how far apart they are, um, whatever you like. Most likely though you want to make, move them around um, and the, the easiest way honestly to, to move these, you can drag and drop them but it's going to be less complicated if you drag these, these numbers here where it says a line, you've got this move to toggle animation for position, you can actually slide these numbers across as well and it's just more, more precise and less frustrating actually. There we are. So we've got, um, I've accidentally created a new text layer. It won't show anything because there's nothing in it, but I like to get rid of it. And if you if you right click on things, it brings up a menu and I can just clear that one. Right, the auto save just appeared there. And even if you've got auto save happening, it's a good idea every now and then to go and save your project. Because it's very demanding on your processor, uh, your computer might decide that Adobe Premiere is too much for it if you're working on a laptop. If you're on a university machine, that should happen almost never. But in any case, uh, keep saving your, your project. Okay, I've got titles, I've got sound, I've got an edit I'm happy with. Um, so I'm just write it, push it to the beginning there by deleting that space. Now I want to export that file. If I click on export in the tabs here, I get some presets. The first thing I want to do is give it a name. Which is video tutorial. And I'm going to put it in the right place. I'm going to put it in the same place that I've got the rest of my project. And I'm going to choose a preset. Um, this remembering my previous presets, uh, and there are all sorts in here, it's a bit bewildering, but typically what you want to do is pick one of the YouTube ones. It's pretty safe, most things can, can play it. And don't go mad on the resolution. If you, if you output in 4K, it's probably going to be difficult to upload to Brightspace. I've gone for a conservative 720p, which is the old school HD. Um, if you can't find that, um, it's in H264. And then you can scroll down, there'll be a list of them available. Um, you can also search for a preset. More presets. Um, and type in YouTube there and it will bring in all the YouTube ones. Be aware though that some of these are different shapes. So uh, the HD, Ultra HD, Full HD, they're all the same 16 by 9 format, which is the most common video format these days. But for example, YouTube SD 480p, not the wide one, but the, the standard SD one, that's actually a little bit more square. So it's, it's going to be a different shape. So you want to avoid that one. The wide one is okay, but that's kind of low resolution even for people who want to upload to Brightspace. I recommend YouTube 720p if you're not sure of what you want to use. Um, and when you're happy, you just click export. And with a bit of luck, it will start exporting. <laughs> 